Hello, it's me, Duty Boy. Welcome to a tutorial video where I'm going to show you step by step how to build my guardian farm and get unlimited prismarine materials, which are only dropped by guardians. To my subscribers, you have asked me for this for years. You've waited for it, and I appreciate your patience. Almost 360 of you subscribed to this channel because of a video I posted in June of 2021, which was created during a survival Let's Play session and presented as a kind of half Let's Play, half tutorial. In this video, I'm going to focus on the second Guardian farm I built in that video, which is my original design and I've made some improvements to share with you today. This farm does require you to drain all the water within the bounding box of the ocean monument. When the player is at the AFK spot over the farm, it spawns guardians in four water chambers surrounding a drop pit. Soul sand at the bottom of these chambers pushes the guardians up and out of the bounding box of the ocean monument, removing them from the local mob cap and drops them into the central pit. Fall damage should kill or greatly weaken most of them and there are campfires down here to help finish them off quickly and maintain the farm's efficiency. The items are then collected in hoppers and immediately dropped into a water stream that flows into a storage system. We will not be covering how to build the storage system in this video, but I've provided links to some other videos on storage systems down in the description. Here's a full list of materials you'll need to build this guardian farm according to this video, including the surrounding walls. All of the prismarine blocks and sea lanterns listed here will be acquired in the process of tearing down the ocean monument. If you don't want to use cyan glass, you can use any glass blocks or just use more prismarine blocks instead. I personally like to watch the guardian spawn and fall into the center chute. The white stained glass is optional or instead you could use this same quantity of string. At the end of this video, I'll be showing you how to use these materials to exploit pack spawning mechanics to increase the output of this farm by more than double. For tools, you will need a sword, or preferably a trident, enchanted with impaling or loyalty at minimum. One to four pickaxes, or a pickaxe with unbreaking three and mending, and a couple stacks of bottles of enchanting to repair it. And you'll need a shovel, or some torches. You also need at least three TNT and three redstone blocks to ignite them. Some stacks of dirt and or scaffolding is also necessary and you need two buckets for water. The work you're going to do requires a large volume of invisibility potions, almost three shulker boxes worth. Another two shulker boxes of sand or gravel are required for the draining process. You'll also want 10 to 14 obsidian and a flint and steel to create a portal to the nether. A conduit would also be helpful, but if you don't have one, then night vision and uh, water breathing potions will also help. You also need sponges to drain the water, but you can find these inside the ocean monument. The first step is to find an ocean monument. The website chunkbase.com has an app that can help you find one in your world, or you can simply explore deep ocean biomes until you find one. If there is no land nearby, then set up a platform of temporary dirt blocks roughly 50 blocks away from the monument. Raise kelp from the ocean floor so you can place a block on the surface. Build a camp here with storage for materials, a bed, and a campfire so you can cook raw cod to eat and light up the area. Start off by attacking the ocean monument. Remove all but one piece of your armor, consume an invisibility potion, and approach the front of the monument. The three Elder Guardians inside the monument are your targets. There is one in the top level and two more located in these front wings of the lower levels. The Elder Guardians will hit you with mining fatigue immediately, even if you're invisible, so you won't be able to break the blocks to get inside. Instead, place a TNT block on top of the monument. Surround it with sand or gravel blocks. Place a redstone block directly on the TNT and swim away to avoid the blast. Then swim inside the monument and use your trident or sword to kill the Elder Guardian. When they're at rest with their spikes out, striking an Elder Guardian with a sword will cause you to take some damage, resembling a Thorns enchantment. However, when the Elder Guardians are swimming, their spikes will be down and you can keep striking them until dead. This damage can be avoided with a trident. Repeat this process with the two other Elder Guardians. Be advised the two in the lower wings may swim to another location deeper in the monument, so be prepared to search for them. By the way, Elder Guardians always drop a wet sponge block and also have a small chance of dropping the tide armor trim. These items might float upwards, so swim near the ceiling 
or check on the water's surface. When the Elder Guardians are dead, they will not respawn, and you will no longer suffer from mining fatigue. Use more invisibility potions and start demolishing the monument. Remember earlier I said you could wear one armor piece? I recommend diamond or netherite boots with the depth strider and feather falling enchantments. I also recommend starting from the inside as collecting blocks from the ceiling will be faster than swimming all the way up to the water's surface. When you have 42 prismarine blocks on hand, which can include sea lanterns, you can construct a conduit directly under the center of the monument to enjoy benefits such as infinite water breathing, haste, and night vision while you work. If the area below the monument is too shallow or buried like this one is, then just build it within the monument, about eight blocks just inside the entrance. This might actually be a better location to build it since you have to place fewer blocks to finish the conduit frame. The ocean monument is supported by a large prismarine platform and you want to remove most of the blocks on top of this platform except for a single line of prismarine blocks running around the entire outside of the platform. Avoid breaking your conduit during this process Process. Maintain your invisibility by consuming another potion when the mirror icon starts to blink, just before the effect wears off. Always have your next invisibility potion ready in your offhand. If a guardian spots you and starts attacking, swim away and go behind blocks. Consume another invisibility potion and you should be able to return to work. As you tear down more of the monument, the guardians will begin to cloister around the remaining upright blocks. I'm not sure why they do this, it could just be a bug in their pathfinding. If a guardian swims between you and a block you're breaking, don't freak out. Just quit mining and resume when clear. Avoid striking the guardians while demolishing the structure or they might detect you and attack. With the monument gone, fill in the gap between the two front areas of the platform so that you have a solid base to build on. Note the 4x4 sections of prismarine bricks spaced around the outside of the platform. I recommend recreating one of these in the center of the gap like so. Also, connect the single line of prismarine bricks running the perimeter. Now build walls from the base to the surface on all four sides of the platform using the blocks collected from demolition. I chose to alternate four wide sections of prismarine brick with five wide sections of cyan glass. These sections align with the squares of prismarine brick on the platform at the edges. Line the top with more prismarine bricks and center a sea lantern over each glass section to prevent spawns on the wall. However, you can use any material or design you prefer. This wall design is simple for a reason. It allows you to place a large quantity of blocks without thinking too much, allowing you to keep a closer eye on your invisibility icon. Note that you can also wall off and drain a wider area around the monument if you prefer, and doing so can actually help with the efficiency of the farm. We'll touch on this more later. Now you're ready to drain the area. Continue using invisibility potions from your hotbar as you work. Using sand or gravel, move four blocks in from the side and start placing the gravity blocks against the wall. Keep sinking gravity blocks until you have a column of sand and then continue adding more columns until you have a full wall across the entire area. I use the shift key to back out over the edge of the last sand column and I aim at the top of the second sand block down. This seems to allow you to drop the sand more quickly. If you know of any other methods, please post them in the comments. In tearing down this monument, I collected almost two stacks of sponges, but I might have been rather lucky. If you don't find this many in your monument, consider finding and attacking another ocean monument until you have around two stacks. Or use more sand to create a small 3x3 water column that you can dry using however many sponges you can find. Use the sponges to start draining the enclosed three block wide area, going from the top to the bottom. When done, punch all the sponges you can reach to collect them. To get back to the top, simply break a gravity block to create a column of water and swim up. Continue collecting the wet sponges across the drained area. To dry and reuse your sponges, build a nether portal on the sidewall. Light it and go to the nether. The nether is so hot that when you place sponges on the ground, they will dry instantly. While punching a large quantity of sponge blocks takes several minutes, the alternate method of drying them in furnaces takes even longer and uses fuel. When done draining the first segment, dump another wall of sand four blocks away with a three wide section of water between. Drain this section the same way. You can then take down the previous wall and reuse these gravity blocks to wall off another segment and drain it. Continue doing this until you've drained the entire area. When you reach the far end, you'll very likely have a four wide section of water. Reduce this to three wide by creating two sand walls within it, and then you should be able to drain it just as easy. Find the center of the platform. You can do this by pressing F3 and G to turn on junk borders. 
The center of the monument is always marked by the centermost chunk border line. This can be a bit difficult to see and figure out, so another way to find the center is by using temp blocks to draw a line diagonally across the platform and then draw an intersecting line to find the center. Place four blocks around the center to mark it. From the corner, go out two blocks and place a new corner block. Do this on all four sides, connect these, and remove the center blocks. Move to the corner of this square, go straight out three blocks and place a block here. Place five blocks behind it and another five blocks this way. Fill in the other two sides to form another square. Build three more squares like this on the other three sides of the center square. The center square is the drop chute and the four around it will be water tanks. Place a block on each corner. Fill in the walls between with either prismarine blocks or cyan glass or a mixture of both like I've done. On the first level only, fill the middle with soul sand. Raise these walls up until your feet are at level Y63 with the top block at Y62. This is the same level as the ocean and the surrounding walls. Repeat this with the three other squares surrounding the center. For the middle drop chute, I didn't bother with any cyan glass. I just used four columns of prismarine brick, all going up to level Y62, with walls of regular prismarine between each, with the exception of the top row. Get on top of one of your water tanks and from the middle run two more prismarine bricks from each corner into the center. Fill between them with two more rows of prismarine. Knock out this top row of prismarine if you need to and place four glass panes here. Run a line of prismarine bricks all the way around the water tanks. For the level on top of that, I'm going to place three prismarine bricks at each central corner and two at each end, like this. Then you can fill between these with regular prismarine or more cyan glass. I'm doing a mix with prismarine on the outside. Convert 42 prismarine bricks into 84 slabs and cover all the walls with them. At this point, we're going to pause working on the spawning mechanism and return to the bottom level. Break through the side of the drop chute and dig through the floor. If there's water under the floor, you'll need some additional prismarine to extend the drop chute walls down through the center to the ocean floor. Then use sponges or sand to take the water out of here. Continue mining down to level Y25 so that your feet are at Y26. On the north side of this chamber, dig out another row of blocks three high. Also dig a small two high work corridor around this area. From inside the three high side chamber, place a row of blocks across the bottom and then place a dropper on each. Move behind them and against the floor on the south side of the drop chute, place the other four droppers. Place two observers looking at each of these droppers, then turn around and place two more observers looking to each of the top droppers. Place four hoppers on each of the top droppers, making sure the bottom funnel is straight down and not curved. Then place a redstone comparator coming out of each hopper. Run a line of blocks behind the comparators and then place a redstone torch behind each block. Place another row of hoppers on top of the first row and then place three more rows of hoppers going into the first row, making sure all the funnels are going forward. Move back in front of the top droppers. Dig two blocks to either side of the droppers and then dig another six blocks in the same direction. If you dig six blocks this way and run into a flooded or dark cave, then maybe run this tunnel on the other side. These six blocks are where you can build your storage system, so go ahead and do that now. I built the auto sorting storage system designed by Impulse SV with two columns for prismarine shards, two for prismarine crystals, and two for raw cod, which would go in here. I also built a drop chute and a bubble cobble to get up and down quickly, and given more time, I would probably decorate this room with prismarine. After building your sorting system, pillar back up to the area above the collection hoppers and close up the wall behind you. Take out the block in the floor between the hoppers and the droppers and replace it with packed ice or blue ice. Place a top half slab over the ice and then dump a bucket of water on the other side of the slab. 
Fill in the space above the slab with a block so items don't get stuck on top of it. Place a block if needed and dump another bucket of water here to form another water flow going the same direction as the previous. Fill in the rest of your work corridor and then pillar up, knocking out the blocks above you and placing them below you until you are just above the hoppers. Stop here and place campfires on every hopper, starting on the far side and working your way back to your pillar. Then continue pillaring up by mining upward and fill them below you until you reach the base of the farm. Close up the walls. Refill your water buckets and make a half stack or so of disposable slabs. Swim in the surrounding ocean and collect a couple stacks of kelp. Then fly, scaffold, or pillar your way back up to the top of the farm. Cover the top of a water tank with slabs, then place two buckets of water one space apart. Refill them both from this middle source block and then fill this other. Then take out the slabs. If done right, the water should flow over the glass panes at the end. Do this on all four water tanks. Swim to the bottom of a water tank and place kelp on one side going all the way up, but not into the source block above the tank. Then place kelp on another side going all the way up. The center water blocks will become source blocks and will start bubbling. Swim down to the bottom of the kelp stalks. Standing at the corner, aim down and punch out all the kelp stalks at the base. The bubble columns will force you to the surface. If you did this fast enough, the water flowing on the surface should be fine. Repeat this with the other three water tanks. Fill in the space between all slabs with full blocks. Place sea lanterns three blocks in from each side and four around the center to prevent spawns on top of the farm. Grab yourself a stack and 23 scaffolding or just as many dirt blocks and start pillaring up from one of the center blocks on the farm. On top of this pillar, place a glass block. Your feet should be at Y154. Use the extra clear glass I threw into the materials list to create a 6x6 platform here. Pillar up two more blocks and place one to four slabs here as a roof to protect you from phantoms while you AFK here. I've created a 128 block spawning spear here at the player's AFK position just to show you that the player's spawning radius ends just below the bottom droppers. This allows this mechanism to continue working without issue. I also got kind of lucky that there are not too many caves or spawning areas within the radius, except over here. If I wanted to improve the efficiency of the farm a little bit, I could drain or fill this area to prevent these spawns. Also, I mentioned earlier that you might want to remove more water than what I have. If that's the case, consider all of the water inside this circle on the water's surface to be disposable. The farm is now complete, and if you AFK here for over an hour, you should get around 15,000 items according to my testing. However, you can double the output of this farm by exploiting pack spawning mechanics. I'm using the mini HUD mod to show you the bounding box of the Ocean Monument. Within this bounding box, uh, this blue glowing area, only guardians can spawn here. As you can see, it starts down here at Y39, and it goes all the way up to here at level 61, stopping just under the surface of the water. Here is Y61 on the farm that we've built. To exploit pack spanning mechanics, we wanna build a platform made of non-spawnable blocks one level down here at Y60. I'm going to use white glass to build this platform so that you can see it more clearly in this video. However, you might wanna build it out of string if you don't want it to be visible. Pillar up to Y60 on the side of the farm, place a block, and then start running a diagonal line out for 10 blocks. Since we can get on top of the white glass, it makes this platform easier to construct. If you're using string, you'll wanna run a series of scaffolds outward diagonally, or perhaps even build dirt platforms about three blocks below here. Anyway, I'm going to place two blocks for every one diagonal block I'm going to count, and I'm only counting the ones that run diagonally from this corner. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then pillar up to the inner corner of the farm and place ten blocks diagonally from the corner of the drop chute. 
Now connect all the outer blocks and fill in every space between them. When you're done, you will have non-spawnable blocks in this pattern surrounding your farm. Make sure to place non-spawnable blocks under these bridges as well. With this additional fix, my testing on this farm produced over 31,000 items per hour. That's without removing the additional sphere of water around the farm that I showed you earlier. I hope you see similar results if you try this and please let me know down in the comments. I hope you found this tutorial useful. This guardian farm is a lot of work, but it looks great and has great output. And if you build this in your world, I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.